Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric and this is the all new 2023 Kia Sportage. This top trim Sportage X-Line Limited has all the fancy bits and pieces, but can it dethrone the Mazda CX-50 as the best compact SUV on the market? Well, yes, but actually no, but yes. You see, it really depends on what you're kind of looking for, but we're, we're going with that. As always, first of all, we're going to take a look at the exterior, then the interior, then we're going to drive it, and in the end, we're going to sum it all up in the final thoughts, and if you end up liking the video, consider subscribing because we upload videos every single week. With that being said, let's start off talking about the exterior, and the Sportage is quite, uh, quite uh, polarizing with its style. I will be entirely honest, when I first saw it, I was like, mm, I don't know, but now having it here in person, especially in the more off-road looking, rugged looking X-Line with the jungle green. She's pretty. She is pretty, look at her. I stand by what I say. Have I ever said that? I don't know, I might have not been on record on that, but I thought about it. So I'm gonna go on record now. Kia and Hyundai design is about four years ahead of the trends. Trust me, some people might not like them right now, but in five years, everybody's gonna look at this and damn, this is sexy. Let's go look at the back though, because this is actually a nice modernization of the previous generation Sportage, which I think looked quite awkward. This one though, no, they did a good job. I like it. I think this looks great. It's exciting. It's not boring like so many other SUVs. I like it. But let's take a look at the interior, shall we? Okay, now in the interior of the 2023 Kia Sportage, and this is a modern Kia product, as per usual, this is a really nice interior i always say that while the mazdas often compete in price with things like this and like ford escapes and all that they aren't really regular cars the mazdas are more like premium because they're just so nice on the inside and i would say this just inches so 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 close on premium because this is really nice so first of all like all the touch points are just comfy nice we have leathers we have this wooden trim which looks fantastic that's this big screen so these two screens which look like one display it is very nice yeah there are some plastics that you wouldn't find necessarily in these spots in a mazda but that gets countered with the immense technology that we have here first of all the infotainment as per usual this is the hyundai kia genesis infotainment it is fantastic it is beautiful to look at especially in this neon design it is fast it is responsive i like it android auto apple carplay wired our digital gauge cluster as always is fairly customizable has all the info you need it's very responsive it looks very nice other than that i wish they would go a little easier on the piano black they started doing this with the ev6 that's when i noticed that you know they use a little more piano black and they put it on literally all the touch points so that's not really great because if you own this, eventually it'll look greasy, it'll look dusty, and it'll look scratchy. That's a bit unfortunate, otherwise usability is good, although I wish this wouldn't look like um, flying a Cessna 172. This literally looks like they ripped it out of the airplane, but this is really complaining on a high level. Going back to positive things, these seats are comfy, ventilated, and heated. Seating position is a-okay. And then we have this, um, these HVAC and audio kind of controls this mixed touchscreen interface it looks great and it, yes it does clean up the the center stack a lot I like it looks wise but it's just I just don't think it's functional it is sometimes you're in the wrong mode so you intend to change the volume then you change the temperature or vice versa and because it's a touch interface if you're not on the smoothest of smooth roads it'll take forever to press the right thing especially if you're in the climate thing and you just want to hit this tiny little button and you it's like there's bumps and you on the highway it's just not great looks good functionality wise eh, at least you have a volume and a tuning knob that is good then uh two more little quirky things well, well one isn't quirky we have a big sunroof really nice love it awesome then we have these cup holders and they made them really nice so first of all right now it's just a storage compartment right you have plenty of space but if you want cups click click there you go you have your cup holders you can put them in they are adjustable in size and whenever you don't need them anymore you just shove it in and you regain the storage nice well thought out cleans up space looks nice gives you extra capability great honestly up here very 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 nice stunning 
and for the most part, very well in terms of functionality. And then taking a quick look at the rear, of course, for someone like me, 125 pounds, five foot seven, there is plenty of space, but even other people I've had in the back have not complained even during a longer trip that I did with five people in the car. Materials obviously are not quite as nice up as up in front, but all the touch points are still soft. And as per usual in Kias, the back side of the front seats, it has like a super capabilities it's super usable so you have your USB-C slot in there and you have a little hanger in there the headrests have a bit of space to put stuff it's actually really well thought out and I always love to see it and with that being said though let's take a look at the trunk and then we go driving and welcome to the extremely spacious trunk of the Kia Sportage normally in compact series I am quite cramped while laying down here, but this is actually extremely good. Bigger by far, bigger than for example the CX-5 and the CX-50 despite being a smaller vehicle. So just as this with the second row up, we have 39.6 cubic feet of space, but of course we can have a little more if we choose to do so. And we don't have to go around, just hit these levers, maybe once more, there we go. And the seats go down, I just have to give a little bit of help back here. There we go. But other than that, super easy. No need to normally go around. We have grocery bag hangers, albeit not the best ones. It could have a little bit more grip. But other than that, no, this is fantastic. So much space, 74.1 cubic feet. 74.1 cubic feet, that's massive for a compact SUV. So if you need storage, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this will serve you a lot better than a Mazda will. But with that being said, let's go driving, shall we? Now we're on the road, traction control off, sport mode, brake torque, and let's see how quick it is. Okay, here comes the torque, thank you. And third, okay, okay, okay. So this Kia Sportage definitely is one of the slowest compact SUVs that we have tested. Let's go back into normal, traction control on, all the good stuff wonderful because we have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four made it to an eight speed automatic powering all four wheels and the thing about this naturally aspirated inline four is that while it does make 186 horsepower and 100 and, sorry 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque which in most situations especially in the city is sufficient out on the highway it can sometimes be not quite satisfying to drive in terms of what it gives you especially because the eight speed auto in my opinion could use a little bit more tuning so let's say you're out on the highway you see a gap on your on the left lane you want to take that lane but a car is coming up ahead you don't need to like jump in it and full throttle but you want to accelerate a little bit right because that left lane is just going a little bit quicker so you start rolling on the throttle you see you can left rolling on the throttle it gives you the first downshift now the downshift isn't extremely fast, but it's fine. It's like about normal, I would say. Now you keep rolling on throttle, right? Because you need the power. And then it does a second downshift. So now the car is coming closer and closer and closer, but you're still literally not moving any faster. So at that point, you just kind of have to slam it. So it gives you the power. Just give me a bit of power in between, okay? If I'm rolling on the throttle, I will keep rolling on the throttle until you give me power because I need more and more and more and more power the longer it takes to give it to me. So that could use a little bit of refinement and you, sometimes you need to rev it out a little bit, little bit and you will notice that like under like 2,500 2, RPM really not much is happening. You need to rev it out because it's naturally aspirated but on the plus side fuel economy is about eight and a half liters I get combined which is fairly good, fairly good. And except for these kind of cases on the highway that I just talked about, I generally am mostly satisfied with the drivetrain but like i said this is about dethroning the cx50 and that is a difficult task because the cx50 fixed a lot of the things i didn't like about the cx5 mainly that was handling now handling doesn't really matter in a compact suv um let's just briefly talk about it it isn't super duper handling wise like the cx50 will handle better but i really didn't do not care this is adequate is communicative enough so you know where, this, where the limit is if you ever need to find it in an emergency situation. This is fine. What this does really, really well though is the suspension because normally I find Kias and Hyundais are set up a little bit more 
stiffer, a little more sporty up to give you that, to give you that sporty feel. And they've finally done the opposite. This might not feel quite as engaging, but it is comfy. The suspension is really well dimmed. Board imperfections, most of them really get absorbed fairly well, especially bigger bumps are just, it's just a very smooth movement of the body and the suspension. Yes, smaller imperfections on the road just get transferred to you, but that's really, honestly, for the segment we're in here, this is totally fine. No, I really like the suspension. Good job on that. I'll just quickly turn right here. As you can see in these kinds of scenarios, the uh, inline four, totally adequate. Bit of rough hang there, but totally adequate. And noise, vibration, harshness, while we're talking about comfort, uh, really good. This is a comfy, comfy cabin to be in. Very nice and definitely one of the best in the segment. Now we go to the big trump card, the big pro that you always have in Kia's dome, and that is technology. And Hyundai Kia's amazing active lane centering system because it's not coupled to cruise control. I can literally turn it on right here and now the car will steer for me. It is a semi-autonomous assist, meaning you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times, but it is really, really good. And especially, you know, if you have to drive while you might not necessarily want to, that being you might be a little bit tired, you might be stressed or just, you know, just difficult roads. This will give you that extra bit of security and I use it all the time. It's great, I love it. Now this is good. This is really, really good. And as you've seen, this versus the CX-50, it's a lot of back and forth. So why don't we sum it all up in the final thoughts and see which one you should actually pick. Okay, final thoughts on the 2023 Kia Sportage X-Line Limited. And as soon as Kia announced the Sportage, the new Sportage, I knew it was probably going to be the best compact SUV on the market with only possibly the CX-50 being able to beat it out. And that's what this whole video was about, right? Is this the best compact SUV on the market? And I said in the beginning, yes and no. Because as you might have noticed throughout, there is just a lot of trade-offs. There's a lot of things the CX-50 does better and there's a lot of things that Sportage does better. And it really just depends on what kind of car you need and what you're looking for. So the CX-50, for example, just has the nice entry of better materials. I think it is easier to use. But the Sportage, on the other hand, has more tech, both driving as well as interior tech. The Sportage also has more storage. The CX-50, on the other hand, has more power as we've had it in the, in the turbo, mo turbo model. So it is really just, you, you really got to decide. Personally, it is so hard for me to say, but I would, I would probably just like inch very, very slightly towards the CX-50. But aspect this Kia Sportage top trim clocks in at $43,245 Canadian. That is almost $5,000 less than the CX-50. Of course, some optioning here now, trimming and engine choices, you can get it closer to about $2,000, but even then, you do have the value that the Kia Sportage offers is definitely another point. So in that regard, you could actually reasonably say the Kia Sportage wins because it is pretty much a tie, but the Sportage is cheaper. So really like this is just, you gotta decide for yourself. All I can tell you is both are absolutely fantastic and I just very, very slightly prefer the CX-50, but this is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic, I love it. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped you choose a car or you just had fun. Uh, that's kind of the main thing I want to have you have here. It's fun. That's why sometimes I'm a little weird. Anyhow, um, if you liked it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Like I said, reviews every single week, free, yada, yada, yada. You know all the good stuff. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. Remember to love yourself even when times are tough. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much and goodbye.